Okay, in lesson two, we're going to start focusing on how we can actually plan out and create an image map. So we won't actually be coding one just yet in this lesson, but we will start to map out and actually write handwritten code that will resemble what an image map would look like in code on a page, in your web page. So our learning targets here are that we can describe the steps needed to create a client-side image map. So remember the client-side image maps are the types we'll be creating. They're the ones where there are HTML tags within the HTML document that the browser must interpret and then create into that image map. So remember server side, those are for created on server software and we don't have that. So we'll be created a client side image map where the browser takes all of our tags and transforms it into an image map. So a couple of key things to note as we get started is there are two main components to every single image map that you'll be working on throughout this class. First is that you have to have an actual image. You can't create an image map without an image that you are creating a map of. So you'll have to have an image on your image map as well as what's called a map definition. And that's actually where we write the code for that image. So it defines all of the hotspots and the URLs to where they will link. So you'll have your image map, the image part, and then you'll have a map definition that really identifies those hotspots, their locations, where they are at, and then the URL is where they will link to when they are actually clicked. So again, you have to have these two components, both of them, the image and the image tag, as well as a map definition with a map tag that defines those hotspots. If you don't have both components, you won't be able to actually create a working image map in your website. So there are four main steps to creating an image map. First, you're going to select an image to use as your image map. So we'll talk through that in just a second. Second, you'll sketch in the hotspots on that image map. Third, you'll map the image coordinates for each hotspot. And then notice it's not till step four until we actually create that code. So you have to go through these first three steps first before you can code. Without selecting a good image, sketching in those hotspots, and then figuring out the coordinates, you can't start to write your code. So you'll need to go through all four of these steps every time you create an image map. So first, we wanna select an appropriate image. So something that's appropriate has really obvious, distinctive sections to that map that you can see, well, yes, I could click on this particular region and this particular region and this particular region. Whereas an inappropriate image doesn't have distinct visual sections. And I'll show you an example on the next slide. So if you look here, this first map up here of the world has some really distinctive sections. They're color coded. This would make a good image map because you'd know if you're clicking here on this orange section, you're going to link to the United States. Here on this tan section, you'll link to Russia, things like that. So you know that wherever you click, they're going to be linking somewhere. You know that there's a distinct region. If you look down here, everything's kind of meshed together. You can't really see where the United States, Canada, and Mexico completely differ because they're blurred in the same color. So the second one down here really would not make a good image map. Something like what's on the top of this slide would be much better because of those distinctive differences between those different areas on the map and there's like an outline to it. So just kind of noting what image would make a good image map versus what maybe would not. Then the second step is to sketch the borders of those hotspots. So you have to identify the sections of the image that you actually want to be hotspots. And those can be a variety of shapes, but you need to state, okay, this section is important. This section is important. And maybe every part of your image will have a hotspot on it, or maybe just a couple of key portions of your image will have a hotspot. Kind of depends on what you're needing it to be. So if you look here, say that you created a map of the United States and you wanted it just to link to Wyoming, Nevada, and Arizona. So you'd identify those as hotspots and you'd kind of sketch them in. So you can see that I have a square sketched in here. I have a non-regular shape sketched in here, so it's just a polygon, and same thing with Arizona. So I'm noting those as key hotspot areas and I've sketched them in. So when you print off an image that you're going to use as a image map, I would actually physically draw these places on here. Decide what shape you want your image map hotspot to be, and then move on to the third step by finding those key components and those key points. So again, here's a second example of an image map. I'm going to link to the backyard, dining room, living room, and entryway. And this is actually the website we'll be creating together in lesson three. We'll be creating this particular image map for a home. So then our third step here is to actually 
map out the image coordinates for that hotspot. So you identify some key XY coordinates on that image. And now the key XY coordinates that you need differ depending on the shape of your image map. And we're going to talk about that on the next few slides. So if you choose a circle versus a rectangle versus a polygon, the key coordinates that you need are a little bit different. However, something to note is that the way in which images are designed in HTML is they have their zero, zero coordinate up in the upper left-hand corner. And so I'll show you this when we get into paint later on in this lesson. But something to note is that this doesn't resemble your normal mathematical coordinate plane. You have the zero, zero coordinate for points up in the upper left-hand corner, and then X increases as you move to the right, and Y increases as you move down. So that's just something to be prepared for, is that zero, zero is not in the center of your image. It's actually in the upper left-hand corner, and then you'll see how the pixels and the coordinates, as you go to the right, X increases, and as you go down, Y will increase. So as I said, we're going to use some imaging software to help us. So we're going to use Paint because that allows us to view an image and edit an image that we have. And we'll go into that later on in this lesson, but we'll use Paint to identify those key coordinates. It's not something we can just look at the image and immediately know the coordinates. We have to go in and actually use some sort of image editing software to start identifying the coordinates for those hotspots. So there are three main shapes that we'll be able to use when creating our image map. The first is a rectangle. So you can see here in blue, that's an example of a rectangle. That's a four-sided image where you have two sets of parallel lines and 90 degree angles. Then you have a circle, which has a radius value, and it's the same distance. All points are the same distance from the center. And then you have a polygon that is kind of any other shape that you might want. You can form a polygon to be a triangle, a pentagon, a hexagon, some really odd shape, whatever you'd like it to be. That's what we use the polygon for. So rectangle circle are a little more rigid and then polygon allows us to create almost any shape that our heart might desire. So for each of these, we have to find key coordinates and it differs depending on the type of shape that you select. So for each hotspot, we're going to identify key coordinates based on the vertices of the shape. And then we're going to insert those coordinates into HTML code. And I'm going to go through all three of these on the next three slides, but I just want to really highlight that each of them has a different set of information that it needs to create that particular hotspot shape. So when we create a rectangle hotspot, what we need are the coordinates that are in the upper left-hand corner and the bottom right-hand corner. So we don't need all four corners. What we need instead are just the upper left and just the upper right, because if it knows the upper left and the upper right, it can actually draw the rest of that rectangle. So those are the key coordinates that we will need. And then you'll use rect as the value for the shape attribute. And that will make a little bit more sense when we start actually writing out our map and area tags when we start making these image maps. But note that for a rectangle, you just need two key coordinates, the upper left-hand corner and the bottom right-hand corner. Then for a circle, you need the center point, which right here is 388, 154. So you need the center point right here in the center of the circle. And then you need the length of the radius. So notice here how if you're creating a circle hotspot, you only need one point, the center, followed by the length of the radius, which remember the radius is the distance from the center to any point on the outer part of that circle. And then you'll use circle as the value for the shape attribute when we get to creating that hotspot. And then thirdly, you can use a polygon, which can essentially create any sort of shape you might like. And when you create a polygon, you're actually going to need the coordinates of every consecutive vertex of that polygon. So notice here how I have one, two, three, four, five vertices. For those five vertices, I need to know all five of those points if I'd like to create a polygon. So here we have a pentagon shape, and if I'd like to create this pentagon, I need all five coordinate points x comma y. And here when we get to creating an actual image map, we're going to use poly as the value for that shape attribute. So the last piece is that we're going to actually code the image map. So once we've really sketched out those points, we've found the coordinates for those key hotspots we want to create, we move on to coding. And there are two new tags that you need to know 
when coding an image map. And the first is called the map tag. And what this tag does is it's used to create a client-side image map, the types of images